Hey, what's going on, people? It is your boy Soulfish back at you with another video, and I want to talk to you about the Netflix One Piece live action adaption. I wanted to make sure I addressed it properly about what it was. And uh, I watched it twice. I watched the entire thing in one night by myself, and then I watched it over the course of like two or three days with my wife, a couple of episodes at a time. Um, she really we enjoyed, she really enjoyed it. We were um, watching One Piece as a, as a couple. She started. We kind of hit like Sky Island, and we took a little break from it because I think she was getting kind of bored of it because we were in Sky Island. And then after watching the Netflix series, she was like, "I want to watch more One Piece." And then we, we kept going from there. And now we're done with Sky Island, and we're moving on to Water Seven, which I think she's gonna get really into it. But that's a little bit of backstory. So. I've seen the One Piece Netflix adaption twice, one by myself and one by my wife, and I'm just here to give you my overall opinions and thoughts and views on it. And overall, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and all I can really say is that I liked it. I really did. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't. I understood why why it was the way it was. I didn't wish it would be different. I, I just I just really kind of got it. I understood it for what it was. And I was like, overall, yeah, you know, I liked it. And um, there were things about it that I was a little bit disappointed in. There were things about it I was understanding of. There were things about it I wish it would be the way it was. And it really wasn't much things and I guess I'll get into it. So let me say the things about it that um, I would say were changed that I wish wasn't because long story short there are things about the Netflix adaption that are just completely different from the original story and you should expect it to be that way because they got to cut this like 50 episodes into into eight hours I don't know how many 50 how many hours 50 episodes is but it's 50 episodes 19 to 20 minutes per episode do the math 19 or well, 20 times 50 whatever the fuck the math is 19, 20 minutes times 50, whatever that map is, compared to 8 hours. I don't know what it is, but it's way less time, I can tell you that. Um, 3 episodes would be 1 hour, so... That means 12 episodes would be... 4 hours. Which means 24 episodes would be 8 hours. And that's only half, so there you go, bam! It's like half the time to do 50 episodes of, of material. Um, and there were things that did change that I understood, and there were things like, man, I wish I would have kept that in there. And I guess one of those things would be like when they were in Orange Town with Luffy and the little dog protecting the shop. That character moment I think is so important for Luffy because that was like the first real moment you kind of got of like who is Monkey D. Luffy and what his character stands for and what he's about. And he's a, when he's with the dog and he uses. And he uses the hammer on Mochi and his lion, and then and, and then tells the dog, "Hey, I know you sitting here protecting this shop. It's cool. I understand. I got your back. You can't do it, but I do it for you." That gave you so much insight into Luffy's character so early on. But that character moment with the dog wasn't there. You didn't really see the dog until like the end of the whole buggy arc. So moments like that, I wish they would have stayed in there. There were moments that they did amazing with like I would say buggy as a whole in the live action adaption phenomenal buggy was great like what they did with buggy and what they turned him into in the show oh my god buggy was so awesome my favorite line in the whole series my favorite line in season one I guess would be like when Nami was like Oh my god, you destroyed everything. You destroyed their homes. And Buggy was like, not everything. <laughs> I let them keep their hands. It was just, oh, oh, it was so good. It was like, Buggy was phenomenal. Um, whoever they got to play Kuro, spot on. Kuro was spot on. We didn't get the battle on the hill against Kuro. We didn't get Django at all. There was no Django, but we got Butchie and Slam, but Slam became Sham, and Sham is a girl. And there was no Meow Band Brothers versus Zoro. I mean, there was the Meow Band people, I don't know, versus Zoro, but it wasn't like the whole story about Zoro only having one sword and learning how to get comfortable fighting with one sword. It was just like, oh, Zoro versus these two, and the Zoro beats them. It was like, it wasn't that. 
it didn't have the point of the story behind it. Like I said, they, their things will be changed. But overall, um, I appreciate the story for what it was. And I understand why they changed what they changed about the story. So mostly it was due to location and set design because they spent so much money on the sets and the sets were great. Baratier was great. Going Mary was great. Kai's house was great. Buggy's clown tent was great. Like these sets they developed were so great. But since they spent so much money on developing these sets, the the cast and crew was kind of like forced to be like in that one location, in that one area for the whole episode. I kind of understand exactly what's happening there in terms of production and reproducing the story and stuff. So certain characters and things had to be cut out and stuff like that. So I totally understand it. But I think as overall as a story, as as for what it was, uh, they got the meat. They got to the heart of what like the One Piece story is. They kept the main story beats. They kept everything that made the Ace Blue Saga what it was intact. While removing certain things like the story with Luffy and the dog. While removing Jango. While removing Don the removing Don Krieg was wow. They just removed Don Krieg entirely. Which to me, in my opinion, is the best fight in the entire East Blue saga. They just completely removed Don Krieg. And also removing the fight with Zoro and Hachi. And in the certain moments they changed, like um one moment I really appreciate is the way the story is originally told was when Luffy showed up to Coco Village and he was talking to Bell Mare. My bad. My bad. Talking to Nojiko about Bell Mare. Luffy walked away and, and lay down on the beach and went to sleep. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't care about like the, the sad backstory. He just went to sleep. That was it. Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp heard everything about Nami's past, but Luffy didn't hear a word. He didn't care. Then he woke up and he saw Nami was stabbing herself and he was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he just stopped her and Nami told Luffy, I told you to go away. Luffy said, yeah, you did. You don't know nothing about what's going on. Luffy was like, no, I don't. I don't I don't know shit. I don't understand anything. Go away. Luffy was like, all right. Oh, Luffy, I need your help. Okay, cool. I'll help you. That's all Luffy cared about was Nami asking for help. He, he didn't understand anything because he never heard Nojiko tell the story. Like he never heard it. He went to sleep. The live action changed it when Luffy heard the story. I think that took away from Luffy's character a little bit, but they changed things like that, little small details that, unless you're like a super diehard fan of One Piece, wouldn't really matter to you that, that those details got changed. Um, they did all the Straw Hats justice. I think Nami was the weakest character out of all of them. Mihawk, <laughs> Mihawk fans are celebrating right now, but they, they made Mihawk look like a beast. His introduction is one of the best character introductions I've ever seen in a live action series in my entire fucking life. It's fucking amazing. Um, they really made Arlong seem like a gangster pimp. <laughs> and I appreciate it because I always call Arlong like a gangster pimp. I always say he was pimping Nami out. And the way they made him feel in the show, um, when he was approaching other people, you gotta pay tribute, you gotta do this. Oh, right. They really make him feel that way, and every time you saw Arlong, they was playing hip hop music and stuff. I think they were subtly trying to say Arlong was black. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Let me not even get into that. Um, but yeah, uh, I think the One Piece Netflix was great. Did I have small problems with it? Yeah, sure I did. But overall, I think it was great. I think it was a good story. I think it was for eight episodes and eight hours of content to sit down and watch. I think anybody could sit there and watch it. Like, this wasn't bad. I actually really enjoyed this. Everything with Zeph and Sanji was great. I do think Zeph and Sanji needed more screen time. Um, because in those two episodes that revolved around Zeph and Sanji, they focused mostly on Zoro and Mihawk. So the Sanji episodes were very Zoro-focused. I thought it was kind of weird. Um, but... Overall, man, I thought it was fantastic, and they're going to do a season two. I can only imagine they'll spend the episode on Log Town, and the episode on on Whiskey Peak, and an episode on Drama Island, and an episode on Little Garden, right? Yeah, and then the rest of the episodes on, the rest of the episodes will be spent on fucking uh, Alabarna, Alabasta. I'm having a hard time remembering if, if Little Garden comes before Joe Milan or not, but 
Yeah, no, Lillard Barton comes before Drum Island because Sanami got sick and then he went to Drum Island and then met Chopper. But he was still, you know what I mean? So another eight episodes, maybe ten episodes. I think it'll be pretty cool. Season two will be fucking fantastic. And by the time I finish season two, we'll be done with Alabaster and season three will be going into the sky. That's the only way I can assume it happening. If they continue, if they don't continue, this was a nice little eight episode odyssey. One Piece Odyssey the game sucks. My bad, that had nothing to do with anything. But yeah, it was it was great. It was fine for what it was. It was fine. It's a it's a first time for everything, and yeah, for the first time, a uh, Netflix live action adaption was fine. It wasn't terrible in the slightest, and that's exciting. Like um, I believe there's a Yu Hakusho adaption coming up pretty soon. I love Yu Hakusho. I hope it's good. I really hope it's good, and I can't wait to watch it. Mm, nevertheless, it is your boy, Sophus, and as always, when the world has needed me most, I've come to save the world.